one this year. Not about that. I'm poor. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get going on this this Royal Rumble review here. We got a lot to say. First off, before we do that, Mark, tell me a little bit about the city of brotherly love where they held this show. Oh, what do you, what do you need to know, Brian? Philadelphia. <laughs> tell me about it. Well, uh, are you surprised by what we got here this evening? You told me it was the shittiest city in the world. <laughs> That's not what I said. I said it was a dump, and I said, <laughs> but I, better. I said it was a dump, but I said I love it there. I so see. Don't get mad at me. That's right. About it. That's right. It is a it is a lovely city. Just, just a dump. A, there's just a I lot enjoy of my time in Philly. I love being there, but there's just a lot of trash on the ground. It's, yeah, it's dirty, but it's fine. Just dirty, but fine. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not going to get into, like, ECW and all that shit, because everybody knows. Um, and I expected the crowd to be awful to everyone. And uh, for the most part, they were. You called it. <laughs> I mean, what else do you expect? I mean, they loved Bubba, of course. Bubba Ray Dudley was back. We'll get into that. Go yeah. ahead, Vinny. Let's start at the beginning here. Actually, you know what? I got to start, because you didn't see the opening match. No, I did not. Tyson Kidd, Cesaro, and Adam Rose, who Mark, by the way, had never seen before. No. He'd never seen Adam Rose. Those guys ended up beating the New Day. And they not only beat the New Day, but they beat the New Day clean as a sheet. They had a cool closing sequence, actually. And then Tyson Kidd, uh, Tyson Kidd pinned Kofi Kingston. And that led to Kofi Kingston and Big E being in the match but not Xavier Woods. He was rescinded from the Royal Rumble. Mm. Is that a proper terminology? I guess. Doesn't seem right. <laughs> but it was a fine little opener. And they changed it from an elimination match to a, a tag team match with no notice whatsoever because that's what they do. Naturally. All right, go ahead, Vinny. So the actual pay-per-view opened in 2015 with the New Age Outlaws. That's right. Boom. Versus the Ascension. Mr. Ass, you're on pay-per-view in 2015. Mark, do you recall what you said when you saw the Ascension for the first time? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Your exact words were, who are these clowns? Yep, that sounds about... That, sounds, my, that sounds like me. How yeah. was my Mark impression? Was that okay? Yeah. It was horrible. All right. <laughs> so... Billy started. Vinny's he, strength is his impression, as you'll see as we go through this show. I don't, I don't have strengths. <laughs> I have some weaknesses that are less noticeable than others. I see. Billy hit a hip toss, then he put out an arm bar, and he screamed, That's all I got. <laughs> Pay-per-view, pay per view, everyone. So, and you know what's funny? It's when he said, That's all I got, they chanted, You've still got it. They did. You, you've got that. Which is mm -hmm. very odd. Yeah. So the cutoff road dog, they worked him over for a while. He looked semi-competent for a minute or two, and then it was chin locks on pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Billy got the hot tag. He hit a few punches. Connor snapped, snapped his neck in the ropes, and they pinned him with the fall of man. JBL said this was the first impressive thing he had seen them do, so I guess beating the Mizzes was not impressive. I just love the idea that Vince's idea was, we're going to humiliate this ascension. Week after week after week after week after week. Then we're going to get him over by putting him in the ring with two legends, having a very, very basic match, and having the Ascension win. There was nothing about this that was impressive in any way to anyone. No buys. All right. <laughs> Mark is just shaking his head in <laughs> dismay. Mm. The Helmsleys had a meeting backstage. They agreed to work together to keep Sting out of the building, which they did. In hindsight, so good for them. That's right. Paul Heyman interrupted, and they were in Philadelphia, so the crowd chanted for ECW. Of course. Heyman let them know that if they wanted, he could make sure that Brock Lesnar dealt with Sting. And they seemed intrigued. I, I guess he did. Sting wasn't there. Yeah. I didn't see him. I doubt this will be followed up on ever. I really think Brock Lesnar versus Sting is a terrible idea. They're, they're not doing that match. Okay. Mrs. versus Usos. I don't even know what to say anymore. I have seen this match a million times. Do we have the stats today? Is it now? Uh, I think it was fourteen last time. I believe it's we're been now at least twice a week for two months, mm -hmm. and I believe this makes three because it was a pay per view. That's right. So whatever that would be, I believe they have had sixteen televised matches since December second. Something like that, yeah. And uh, that I've seen everything they can do. Crowd really liked Miz now more than usual. 
there was a spot where first Miz hit a dive, or first Uso hit a dive, and Miz pulled Miz down in the way. So Miz now ate that dive, and then the second Uso tried to wipe out Miz, but Miz was so far out of position that in midair, the Uso realized, no one's going to catch me. And thank goodness he managed to flip over to his back so he didn't die. That was very, very scary. <laughs> what a thank goodness. He jumped over the top rope and landed flat on his back on the ground. Better than on the top of his head. That is true. So the Usos hit Miz with a super kick and a power bomb and a splash and pinned him. Yeah, that'll do it. And uh, that was that. There's new champs if any of you could possibly care. I got to say something here. I don't want to give my dander up or anything like that. Maybe I'm the only person that cares. Okay. But a lot of people are expecting us to rant and rave about the finish of the Royal Rumble and how Roman Reigns won. But I think everybody knew he was going to win going in. Is there anybody that didn't think Roman Reigns was going to win? Uh, last I heard, Bix. Oh. Bix. Well, anyway, <laughs> I figured, I thought that every, well, you know what? Semper Vivi thought that uh, Brian was going to face Brock at WrestleMania as well. So the people were out there. But point is, I figured Reigns was going to win, so it didn't bother me. But you know what's really fucking bothering me lately? When you start doing these near falls and all of the wrestlers start spoiling every fucking near fall because they have to look to where the interference is coming from or they have to look at the referee so that they can time the count every single time. If you go back on the network and you like watch a bunch of stuff from the 90s, you will not see dudes looking to see if somebody is going to come save them. You don't see them looking over the referee as a referee counts so they can make sure they kick out at the right time. They never did that because if you have a fucking brain, you know that after <laughs> kick out, right? One, two, kick out. Why do these fuckers have to look at the referee? These guys actually did a whole bunch of near falls. And every time somebody did a near fall, somebody had to look for where the guy was going to run in to make the save. One, oh, look over. Oh, the guy's going to break it up. Oh, look over. Kill. Why even do near falls if you're just going to keep looking over and, and spoiling it for us by, by looking at the referee or where some dude's going to run in? That's my rant for the day. Who cares about Roman Reigns? Quit looking at the referee. <laughs> Am I the only one that cares? No, no. Well, Yes. I'm, long, I'm, I'm sweating right now. I feel like Ric Flair. I'm long past caring. I took off my jacket and started stepping on it. Anyway. Bellas versus Paige and Natalia. That bugged me. There uh, were two highlights here. First, the baby no, faces. There, there weren't any. There were no highlights. <laughs> that was a boobies joke. <laughs> well, close. Oh, 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 Close. First was when the baby faces hit Brie with a double suplex and damn near pants her. That's right. And yeah. the other was just Nikki standing on the apron in her hot pants. That's the highlights? Those are the highlights. Highlights of this <clears throat> match was when Nikki won with a Misawa elbow. Oh, yeah. While wearing green, the, as it was uh, pointed out to me. Nikki pinned Paige with a standing elbow that you see every wrestler in every match do 20 times, and here was a pinfall. Vinny, do you remember when you were talking about your favorite distraction finish? <laughs> I think it was you. And I, and I think it was Craig suggested another finish. And I told him, no, please, dear God. Because as soon as they come up with a second finish, it's all they're going to do in every single match. I vaguely recall this conversation. Okay, this is the finish now. This is now two times in a week they've done this finish, which is you build to the hot tag and you build to the hot tag, and then somebody pulls the other person off the apron, and then the person never gets a hot tag and they get pinned. That's two matches this week they've done that. What was the other one? It was on Raw. I can't remember who it was. Right. It might have been the week before. But they've got a new finish now. Did they at least hit a move in that one and not an elbow? <laughs> I don't remember. I'm sure they hit a move. I'm sure they didn't just look at them. So this went forever and was terrible. What did you think of this match? Oh, yeah. It really did go on for fucking ever, didn't it? God this is the one where there was damn. like five minutes of silence and finally they just screamed, Somebody end this! <laughs> and they didn't. They just kept wrestling. They only had five matches on pay-per-view. That and was the longest Divas match of all time. It was, well, yeah. You're not watching NXT. Well, that's true. You're, the Divas you're right. matches at NXT are longer, but they're and much better. Better. I've I've heard all these things better. about NXT. I just I'm trying to get through something now, <laughs> just, <laughs> and once I get done with it, I'm probably just gonna resign from the network and dude, go on with my fucking life. Just wait till you start getting to like 2000. When was the worst, Vinny? <laughs> It's pretty we're, bad we're and like... I've gone through a lot of really terrible times. You have. So far. But it's not like it's all uphill from there. I mean... There will be peaks and valleys. God damn. Worst I'm pretty much... Ever? I'm sure... I, I think I'm on the downslope 
right now, and yeah. it, there is no upslope from here. <laughs> well, it's just straight fucking downhill. There's good pay-per-views here and there, but... If you, yeah, okay, if you say so, Brian. I don't remember, actually. Yeah, well, I do, because <laughs> I've recall. been fucking watching this shit. Oh, man. So we were an hour into the show at this point, and I had seen no match greater than a star and a half. He had everyone cutting quick promos about how they would win the Royal Rumble and then they win the championship. Dude, this was amazing. <laughs> it's like, this show was so Vince McMahon. You know what I mean? Here were, he, he chose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think he chose 11 people, 12 people to showcase out of 30 in the Rumble. It was Roman Reigns, Golden Stardust, Rusev, Miz and Mizdow, The Big Show, Fandango, and I think there was one more. Oh, yeah. Brian was in there. Fandango. Oh, Daniel Bryan was the last guy. But I was just watching, and it was like, look at this. It's one cartoon character after another. <laughs> Not one person here has the gimmick of being a wrestler. No. <laughs> You've got Roman Reigns. I guess that's the closest, really. You've got Golden Star Dust, who are Nintendo video game characters. You've got an evil Russian. <laughs> a fucking evil Russian. He doesn't wear shoes. You've got Miz and Mizdow, mm-hmm. a giant, a fucking guy who plays a salsa dancer. Duh, that's awesome. And a bearded lumberjack. Like, every single one of them, one after another, was some sort of cartoon character. It's 2015. We're still watching this. It'll get better. Don't worry. Actually, it did immediately. Yes, yeah, quickly. Yeah. Right. John Cena versus Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. This match was awesome. I command all of you to go watch it right now. Right now. Stop this show. Stop listening to us and go watch this match. And then watch it again. It was phenomenal. The crowd hated Cena. They did not think much of Rollins one way or the other. They really, really loved Brock. I know none of that is news. Did you read the article I did in the figure four this week, Vinny, about why Raw is so goddamn boring? In fact, I did. You know what? This this match right here was everything I wrote about in that article. Correct. It was absolutely, completely different than everything else on this show. Everything else on Raw, Brock Lesnar, they need to give him a stake in the company. And now is a good time because the stock price is low. It's only going to hey, go up from here. Solid point. So give him a stake in the company so he just stays around forever. And every three months he works a pay-per-view and he beats the holy shit out of everybody. And you're going to be okay. It's the only thing worth watching in this company right now is Brock Lesnar killing people. Listen, Seth Rollins was great. And all I saw on my Twitter was how this was a star-making performance for Seth Rollins, and Seth is so great, and Seth was the man in this match. Listen, I love Seth Rollins as much as the next guy, but this was Brock Lesnar's match. Seth always looks good, but Brock made this match here. Otherwise, it would have just been every John Cena-Seth Rollins match you've seen 9,000 times. This was all about Brock, the man. Anyone who says that this is about Seth and not about Brock... They must not have seen the bit where Brock grabbed j and security and had a double German suplex with one guy in each arm. <laughs> yes. It's not like they were standing back to back and he just wrapped his arms around both their waists. No. He grabbed one man with one arm, one with the other, and threw these full-grown human beings backwards over his head. Well, full-grown may be giving him too much credit. They're not getting bigger. That's true. They are full. You know, you're right. I yeah. thought about that. <laughs> they, they have reached max, max potential. So, yes, the first few minutes was Brock Lesnar suplex the, suplexing the hell out of everyone. Big giant German suplexes, suplexes to two guys at once. Then he started throwing these verticals. I have never seen a guy do this, like this. He was throwing vertical suplexes where... He was throwing. He was throwing them. <laughs> like, usually a guy, you know, picks a good dude up for a suplex and they both hit the mat together. Brock would stand on one end of the ring, suplex the guy, and launch him, and Brock would land on his back where he stood, and the other guy would land on his back way the hell over across the ring. It was for epic. Th- for those of you that have never wrestled, when you suplex somebody... You're supposed to stand in a position where when they land, they land right in the middle of the ring because it's springy. Yes. Right? Uh You don't want to stand in the middle of the fucking ring and then suplex them so they get caught in the ropes. Mm -hmm. Brock will walk all the way to a corner and he will hurl them so far that they'll fly all the way across the ring and get their feet stuck in the ropes on the other side. We need a 40-foot ring for Brock Lesnar matches. (laughs) Yes, it's great. I love this man. So it was mostly... The uh, two small men trying to dispose of Brock temporarily and trying to finish each other off. And finally, at last, they realize Brock is not human. We need to kill this man if either of us is actually going to win the match. Even to the point where Cena hit three AAs 
Then Rollins broke up the pin. Then Rollins hit Lesnar with a curb stomp. Cena broke up the pin. And that was when they decided, you know what? We're not going to beat each other until we kill the monster. So Cena tackles him through a barricade. He's about to get back in when he notices Brock is stirring. So he throws him into the post. And he's about to get back in when he notices Brock is stirring. And they do this, do this two or three more times. And finally, Cena like throws the stairs in Brock's face. And Brock goes over the announce desk. And Rollins goes up top and hit one of the greatest flying elbows you've ever seen. Just launched himself through the sky. May have a, just barely missed going into orbit. Came down with a giant elbow onto Brock's ribs. The table shattered. Jerry Lawler screamed, Holy mackerel, Jesus! <laughs> That's what he said. There are tons and tons of this is awesome chants. <laughs> And is that the Jesus fish? It may be. Holy it, mackerel Jesus. That's what he said. <laughs> and uh, this resulted in EMTs coming out to check on Brock over the next several minutes. Uh, the announcers said that they had been told Brock at least had a broken rib, but it might be worse. And if I have any nitpick about this match, it I might... I don't want to hear it. All right. Go ahead. Well, just that the next few minutes, as the crowd was concerned that Brock may have actually died... The heat for the wrestling in the match died a lot, died for a little bit, too. So, they kept on wrestling. It was great. It became Cena versus Seth and J&J Security in a three-on-one match, including Cena hitting the two small men with a double AA. There were points where... Uh, there was a point where Cena grabbed Seth for the AA, and as he grabbed him, he shouted Brock's name, and the spot ended with Cena hitting a powerbomb and like, looking over to see if Brock was going to come break it up. And then Brock never did, and so Seth kicked out. They kept on wrestling, and it certainly did everything they could to make it appear Brock was out. Legitimately out. And finally, Cena kicks out of a curb stomp. So Rollins goes up top and hits a Phoenix splash, and he makes the cover. But then Frank and Lesnar returns <laughs> from the grave. It looks like him, actually. And he hits the Same ring. brow. He suplexes Seth right onto his head. Just kills everyone. At last, Rollins is able to flip onto his feet on a German attempt. He just grabbed his briefcase and started whacking uh, uh, Brock in the head over and over again with it. And he went for the curb stomp, and Lesnar caught him, hit an F5 for the win. Insanely great professional wrestling. I gave it a billion stars. <laughs> One billion. That's a high rating. <laughs> it's awfully great. I don't know the uh, best last WWE match I saw better than this. And that one probably involved Brock, too. Yeah, it probably did, and I gotta say that if Mauro Ronaldo had called this match, it probably would have been one billion stars. I'm quite confident about that. The the biggest thing about this, besides just how awesome everyone involved was, this was a perfect collision between the good, the bad, and the ugly. It really Be was. Because John Cena was the hero, even though this crowd hated him. Lesnar was the unstoppable monster, and Rollins was the snivy little weasel <laughs> trying to... Uh, Trying to, to find a way to claim victory without actually, you know, defeating anyone. Sure. Cheating at all, uh, whenever necessary. Having not one, but two human beings help him. That's right. Yes. This was as close to perfect pro wrestling as you can get. What'd you think there, Mark? What do you think of Brock? He's starting to look real old. He was looking rough. <clears throat> if he's looking to make that UFC comeback. That's the idea, it's, maybe. It's now or never. It is now or never. How old, how old did you say he was? He's 38. He's 38. That man's three years older than me. Yeah. Good fucking God. That's right. <laughs> if you keep working out, though, <laughs> we still got time. We, we didn't talk about how Cena uh, did one move that we've never seen him do. That's right. What did he do? I don't remember. What was it, Vinny? Was yeah. it a Michinoku driver? Yeah, he must have done a Michinoku driver, and it was cool looking, too. Yeah, it wasn't bad. And Every then, once in a while, he'll do like a Frankensteiner, and it looks okay. Yeah. This looked cool. And then he and then he forgot how to pin someone uh, out of a power bomb. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. He forgot about that. He he power bombed. It had to have been Seth. I can't imagine yeah, power bombing yeah, Seth. Yeah, Seth yeah, Brock Lesnar. But yes, he power bombed him. And then instead of just like doing that jackknife cradle, he an epic fucking struggle. <laughs> like he was trying to squat nine hundred pounds. He fought and he battled to get Seth's legs out of the way. So he could then grab his legs and cover him. That was amazing. I have no complaints, though. But I did think of something. <laughs> I did think of something. Maybe everyone's so mad at Vince McMahon for what he did with the Royal Rumble and Roman Reigns. Maybe Vince really is a genius. And it was all by design 
because Reigns is going to be the heel going into the match with a babyface hero, Brock Lesnar. That's possible. Who the fuck is going to boo Brock Lesnar in the WrestleMania main event against Roman Reigns? Nobody. Not even The Rock. So I think you just do the double turn and have Reigns go in as the heel. And he beats Brock. Poor babyface Brock Lesnar. What do you think? Who cares? <laughs> Honestly, who gives a fuck what they do? <laughs> like, it's so fucking terrible and just... Ugh. Over reigns. Uh, who gives a shit what they do with any of them? Well, let's start with the Rumble. <laughs> All right, let's get on One man at a time, Vinny. All right. So, following one of the greatest championship matches... Literally of all time yeah, in this company. Certainly in years. This was awesome. I mean... It, at least since last WrestleMania. Sure. Or probably longer. So, we need some star power to, you know, to come off of that buzz. Man, this Royal Rumble exposed this roster. This roster. I was waiting for, like, Cibernetico, Cibernetico to come out. Oh, fuck. Or, or anyone. First, number one man was Miz. I was so angry. <laughs> <laughs> I told you my scenario for the Miz and Miz Dow, right? You did, but I forget, so go ahead and tell it again. Okay, here's my idea. You have, like, five geeks in the ring, which is not fucking hard given this roster. You have five geeks in the ring, and Miz and Miz Dow come out. And they're in there, and Miz gets tossed over the top rope. So Miz is eliminated, and he's on the floor, and he starts yelling at Miz Dow... You're my stun double. Why aren't why aren't you jumping over the rope and eliminating yourself? I get thrown over, you go over. And Ms. Dow looks at Miz and Miz is screaming at him and he looks at the guys and he looks at Miz almost like they did it. And then finally he's just goes wild and he throws out Curtis Axel and Truth and Zack Ryder and Alex Riley who didn't even make it into the match and everybody goes fucking crazy and then Miz like grabs him like Hulk Hogan and Sid and Miz yanks Miz Dow out and everybody boos and that's how you start the breakup. Instead, they don't even have these fucking guys come out together and they came up with some idea that I guess they thought was better and it was okay because the people liked Miz Dow but I guarantee you my idea would have worked better than the one they came up with. And Miz coming out of the beginning of this match just fucked the whole thing up. So He's was... so mad about the Miz, <laughs> for fuck's sake. These are the things that piss me off. Not Roman Reigns winning. I knew that. <sighs> They're going to break up sooner or later, Brian. Just... I think they broke up tonight. Oh, do you well, think that be... was the breakup? <laughs> See, angle? what you don't understand, Mark, because you don't watch the show regularly, is <laughs> they're going to break up for the next 15 weeks. Ah, okay, yeah. Like they're going to when... break up on Raw, then they'll be back together on the next show. Then they'll break up again, then they'll be back together on the next show, and they'll keep doing that until really nobody cares. Like when Chavo uh, fought Hornswoggle for like a <laughs> yes. year and a half straight. Something like that. The last time I quit watching WWE. Exactly. All right. Where were we? Well, if Miz wasn't a big enough star for you, you'll be happy to hear that Truth was number two. <laughs> That's right. Did his whole rap, which At did not count against his two minutes. I was hoping that he would come out rapping, Miz would throw him out, and Truth would just keep on rapping to the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, that would have been entertaining, and that's not what they do here. That, by the way, everybody, was we thought that would be better than what they did. Mm -hmm. So what they did was 90 minutes of pointless wrestling. And then entrant number three was Bubba Ray Dudley. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mark was so excited to see uh, Bubba back. I, I was, Everyone with Philadelphia roots. Everybody in Philadelphia, of course, everybody's excited. Yeah, That's right. right. Uh, uh, Brian, as, I, I couldn't put it any better than you. It was like Bully Ray and TNA never happened. It was. It was all a dream. He was right back in the glasses and the camo. Like it, He even had the glasses back, like it was, which was you know, yeah. like near the end of their run in, in like WWE. They didn't, 2000 all over again. Shit. It was, yep. yeah. You know what's so funny it about fine. it? He comes out exactly like Mark said. He had the Bubba Ray glasses on. He had the Bubba Ray outfit on. The whole ECW gimmick. Yep. Not even the WWE, the whole ECW gimmick. And it was like, all of a sudden, he was the same guy from 15 years ago. <laughs> he was fat again. And he wasn't wrestling very well. No. The whole Bully Ray that got skinny and was a great worker. And no promo. Where the fuck was he? Because that wasn't the guy that came out here. What they did instead was nostalgia spots. I guess so. Devon was not there. 
So he grabbed the closest available black person, and they did the what's up spot, and he shoved Truth in the t- chest and told him to get the tables, and then Miz tried to break it up, so they hit the 3D, 3D on him. That's right. They threw out Miz, and then Luke Harper was number four, and as Luke was coming out, Ray dumped Truth as well. So we got Luke versus Ray for a while. It was fun. And then Bray was number five, and Bray and Luke are old buddies, and they double teamed Ray to death. Yeah. Threw him out. They agreed to work together to kill everyone. Curtis Axel was supposed to be number six. This was horse shit. <laughs> Technically never eliminated. That's true. No, I, 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 I did just see a list of like, there's like four guys who are still in the rumble throughout time. <laughs> <laughs> like Mabel was never eliminated one you year. You know what they got to do one of these days is they got to they gotta find all 30 guys that eventually never made it to the rumble, and then they got to do a rumble with them <laughs> and find out who really would have won. That's right. That's right. So Eric Rowan came out and beat up Axel, who never was seen again. Okay, this right here, I got to talk about this, <laughs> and I'm going to get agitated again. This is this is a good thing to get agitated about. So you've got Bray, and you've got Luke Harper, and now you've got Eric Rowan in the ring. Now, Mark, you have not been paying close attention, so I'm going to tell you what happened. Mm-hmm. These three guys were a unit. I know, I know that, and they were very over. Yes. And then they decided, we're going to break them all up, and they're going to all go their separate ways. And they immediately all fucking floundered. Yeah. Eric Rowan became a vintner. But I thought... thought A (laughs) winemaker. That's exactly... I I thought that they started, like, when they they started turning turning, uh, Bray into, like, a clown show that... It started to flounder, and that was before they even broke up. Well, it was starting to flounder a little bit when, then. When they like had the the boy singing at the, the choir, <laughs> fucking nonsense. That's right. But it really floundered when they all broke up. Yeah. So okay. here's the Royal Rumble, and they do a spot where they all get in the ring together, and the crowd starts to buzz because it's fucking Philadelphia, and they're smart, dirty town, but they're smart fans. So they know. Oh, thank God, they're going to put these three fuckers back together again. And they'll be better than they were separate. So what does WWE do? They tease they're going to get back together, and then they have them fight. And nobody cared. Yeah. (laughs) And it sucked. Everyone in the world knew that the best possible thing to do was to reunite this act. And the timing was great because Eric Rowan... Should be pissed. In storyline, is a failure on his own. That's right. All he's done is lose since going his own separate way. And he got fucked over by John Cena and fired. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then he came back and lost. That's right. And he should go back and say, look, Bray, I am lost without you. Please take me under your wing again. He is a legitimate little lost lamb. Yeah. But no. They just... Actually, it's even... they did like the worst thing possible. The best thing possible would have been that they reunited. The next best thing possible is that... They would have beat him up and thrown him out, and they still had Bray and Luke as a unit. But no. Instead, they started brawling, and Luke and Eric were fighting, and they break him over and dump them both. So what, are we going to get Bray Wyatt versus Luke Harper? I don't know. Fucking asking me? I don't know. <laughs> I'm busy because I just was given a breaking news update here. I'm not sure if this is true. Mm. But the rumor is that in, in Philadelphia right now, the fans are blocking the way for the wrestlers to get out of the building. <laughs> that sounds severe. I, I don't doubt it <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> I did note on Twitter that the WWE was trolling the entire city of Philadelphia. And this is what happens when you troll people. They get pissed. Goddamn keyboard battery just died. Uh-oh. Oh. I, I can't type. Is there a solution you can fix on the air? I have to text. All right. Should I, I keep going? Batteries. Go ahead. All right. So now Bray's alone in the ring. And out comes number seven, the Boogeyman. Ugh. Papa 50, Shango. everybody. So the whole gimmick is that <laughs> there's two years scary old. guys. 50 years old, yeah. They tried to scare each other for a while, and then it was time to get physical. Bray hit him with a clothesline and threw him out. He didn't even eat any worms. This is very anti That's right. He didn't eat a no single worm. Worms. In 2015, the Boogeyman does not eat worms anymore. No. Preposterous. Maybe he there's did. no worms left. Maybe he ate them all. No, it's because of like... Animal rights and shit like that. It's gotten real popular. Huh. So you can't eat fucking worms on TV I'll, anyway. I'll, I'll try reading a newspaper Or sometime. PG. Maybe in PG lands you can't. Eat worms? Know. Yeah, exactly. Sin Cara was number eight. He got dumped in seconds. Who cares? Bray cut a promo declaring this is Bray Wyatt's year. Dared anyone in the back to come fight him. And then he sang his song and the crowd sang along. 
Zack Ryder was number nine, and that was the moment when it really hit me just how pathetically crappy, poor, shallow their roster is. Not to mention, Bray eliminates like five guys. He just clears the ring, clears the ring, clears the ring, clears the ring. Then he cuts his big promo. This is the year of Bray Wyatt. And that led to... Zack. Bunch of bodies coming out, and it just filled up the ring. (laughs) (laughs) And then he just disappeared until he was eliminated. (laughs) Pretty much, yeah. Like, who the fuck booked this? Not Pat Patterson. No. So Zack got eliminated. Bray was alone in the ring again. Daniel Bryan was number 10. What an amazing reaction he got from Philly coming out. Yeah, a guy they liked. And he made a great comeback and looked like a superstar. Someone for the crowd to cheer for and get behind and enjoy themselves in this hour-long wrestling match. Uh, Fandango was number 11. Awesome. He did not do much for the first. This was your pick, wasn't it? My pick. It didn't make it. This is the long shot. Tyson Kidd was number 12. It's true, he did pick a dark horse there. Yeah. Nothing wrong with uh, back in the underdog. Every <laughs> fucking person in this rumble was a dark horse except Roman Reigns. Yes. We Tyson, have... by the way, I need to mention this. He has new gear that includes cat claw gloves. This is a great man. So uh, for Tyson's whole minute or whatever it was that he was in there, it was all Brian versus Tyson Kidd, and it was great. Sorry, Mark, you going to say something? Oh, uh, I was just going to inform everyone that me and Brian got into a heated debate over whether or not uh, Fandango wear slacks or some sort of uh, trunks that look like slacks throughout the majority of the Rumble. Yes, he, like, uh, who wore real slacks? Kane? Uh, Kane wears slacks. Kane wears real slacks, but Fandango wears worked slacks. The one boy wears uh, jeans. Yeah, Yeah, we were trying to figure out if they were real jeans or worked jeans. This is what the Royal Rumble was. (laughs) Us arguing over men's pants. This this was more exciting (laughs) than most of the entrants in this here Royal Rumble. Mm. By the way, the board crashed during the show. We had over 700 people on the board ranting about the Royal Rumble. I, bet, <laughs> I don't mean this is a shot at them. I bet they were bitching. Uh, yeah. So Stardust was number 13. Mm. Brian dumped Tyson Kidd in here. I guess just so they could say Brian eliminated someone. Bray rolled outside. Brian wiped him out with a big toe pace. So they were both out of the ring. And that meant that there were geeks in the ring for number 14, DDP Yoga. That's right. Before you go on, remember that poll where they asked people what they thought of Raw? And it, people said like 90% hated it? It was like 9,000 people voted Raw sucked and like 1,000 people voted it was great. Yeah. They learned their lesson, or not. Tonight's poll, did you enjoy the Royal Rumble? We are currently at 5,000 votes, giving a thumbs down. This is on the WWE's own fucking website. <laughs> And 1,000 votes saying it was a thumbs up. Not good. So they didn't learn their lesson then? No, I was being sarcastic. Oh, okay. I see. They never learned their lesson. People apparently, uh, at least they're claiming on Twitter, that they are canceling their network as quickly as they can. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even, even Mark knows that's preposterous. Oh, come on, guys. Give me a break. So Paige came in. He did stuff with everyone where he would you know, work with them a bit and then cut a diamond coat out of nowhere. Did it with Stardust. Did it with Fandango. Even did it with Bray. And uh, the crowd liked him. It was like polite applause. It was nothing like the pops that Bubby, Bubba Ray or even Boogeyman got. Rusev was number 15. He quickly put it into that fun and games and tossed Paige out. And then also eliminated a Fandango for good measure. At this point, the four legal men of the match were Rusev, Bray Wyatt, Daniel Bryan, and Stardust. And then Bryan worked over Rusev and Wyatt. And then they cut him off because there was two of them. And then Rusev threw him to the apron. And then Bray Wyatt knocked him down, and Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan hit the floor. He was eliminated. Halfway through the match. <laughs> exactly halfway. We were the 15th man. You know what's so funny about this is somebody called Observer Live today, and they were all excited for the show. And they said, don't give me any spoilers. And I said, well, first off, I don't know any spoilers. <laughs> haven't happened yet. <laughs> but if I had spoilers, I won't give them to you. And he goes, good, I don't want to know what happened. So just for the fuck of it, I yelled, 15! And he was like, no! Don't tell me that! And I said, number 15! And I think that he may have... I'm not sure if he believed me or not, but a lot of stuff happened at number 15. Daniel Bryan was eliminated, Mm -hmm. number one. Rusev came in, and Rusev ended up being the second-to-last guy in the ring, and they were chanting for Rusev, and he almost won. 
That's a very good prediction on my part, I might say. I think almost one is kind of stretching. You know, you're right. But still, he, he was he was he, in there at the end. He was there, and then he was gone <laughs> he as was, quickly as he came back. That's right. And it was funny when they tossed Brian because they, he lands on the ground, and everybody is quiet for a second, and there's a light chant of no, no, no. And I literally wrote down, less of a hostile reaction than you'd think. <laughs> and then Gold Dust comes out, and it, it took them, I think it took everybody about a minute yeah. to like converse amongst themselves and find out yeah. if this was real. And then they got pissed off. Do you know what this reminded me of? You and I were both in New Orleans when the streak ended. That's right. And for about five minutes, it was mostly just silence and gasping. And then the chance for Undertaker didn't start until well into the Divas match that followed. That's right. This was not that extreme, but similar. That's where right. Where there was a delayed reaction because people could not honestly believe what they had just seen. They could not fathom that Daniel Bryan was eliminated halfway through the Royal Rumble. Well? By a guy that he's already had a feud with. You know what's funny about that is is Bray Wyatt pinned Daniel Bryan on Monday. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And so, oh. and so when Daniel Bryan came in, I thought, okay, so Daniel Bryan's going to toss out Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Wrong! Actually, wrong. I have absolutely no idea why they did I mean, this. I, I, I have an idea. Uh, <laughs> Vince they're is fucking dumb! <laughs> it's, it's just a wasted fucking, like, any anybody, like, they could have had my man Fandango eliminate him. And they could have. Fandango's the biggest heel, you know? <laughs> but they just <laughs> waste the shit out of it. Oh, who fucking, I'll tell you this. Who cares? God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. I remember when... Okay, so Roman Reigns has been scheduled to win for a long time. And Daniel Bryan, they didn't even know when he was going to be able to come back. So he finally gets clearance, and they trot him out on TV, and they have him announce that he's going to be in the Royal Rumble. So the first thought is... Why would you have Daniel Bryan in the Royal Rumble if he's not going to win? Were you not fucking there last year? <laughs> what happens when you put Daniel Bryan in the Rumble and he's not going to win and Roman Reigns is? You know this is going to end poorly. What are you going to do with Ryan with Bryan in the Rumble? And the response from somebody in WWE was they didn't think about that. <laughs> may, may, may I repeat myself? Which, They're fucking dumb. <laughs> it sounds funny. But when you watch this show, they clearly didn't think about it because they didn't have an out. Their out was, let's get rid of him before Roman Reigns comes in. And, and they hoped... <laughs> Great fucking plan! They hoped everyone would forget. Yeah. It, it didn't work. Now, part of the problem... Not most of the, most of the problems is they wanted Brian to win and he wasn't even close and, and they were tired of seeing him treated like shit, but too bad. But part of the problem is... This roster is so thin and so pathetic, and there's so few people they have to actually cheer for that they actually like and enjoy. There was only like three guys after this they cheered for. They cheered for Dean Ambrose. They cheered for Dolph. And kind of. uh, I think that's it, as far as people who are actually in the match. So there Ms. was... Dow. Ms. Dow. They did cheer for him. That's true. Yeah. And, and, and we saw... We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! how their fandom was rewarded there So Meanwhile After the it sinks in Goldust is the man in number 16 After Brian's eliminated And the crowd realizes it And they began to boo everyone Everyone in the ring Everyone at ringside The announcers The referees The concession stand Everyone in Philadelphia got booed And then Kofi was number 17 That did not help No <laughs> Number 18 was Adam Rose. Oof. And here I wrote, this is the shittiest Rumble roster ever. <laughs> you know what's funny about when Kofi came in is uh, Whitney was in her office, and I texted her and I said, you're missing a fun Royal Rumble. <laughs> this, by the way, was much earlier in the, in the match, before Daniel Bryan had been eliminated. So she came out with the hopes that Santino was going to be in, because Santino was the only wrestler that she cares about. So she doesn't watch any wrestling. She doesn't care about anything except Santino, and to a lesser extent, the big show. And <laughs> for some reason, she must have been watching last year. But when Kofi came out, she said, hey, isn't he the guy that like jumped and landed on that thing last year? And then blah, 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 blah. That was really cool. 
And I was like, stick around. That's his gimmick. He's going to do it again here. So Kofi's in the ring, and Rusev throws him, and he flies over the top rope, and the Rosebuds catch him, and they dance him around the ring a little bit, and they throw him back inside. And she's like, that was lame. And I said, don't worry. Don't worry. There's more to come. And then he was just thrown out. (laughs) There wasn't more to come. That was his big fucking spot. It's a new day. (laughs) Yeah, it is a fucking new day. (laughs) And not a good one. That was the best they could come up with. Uh Well, he's done. Granted, he's done pretty much. What else could he do? That's true. I mean, he hopped on a chair. He did like, I don't remember. Walked on his hands. Walked on his fucking hands. Got stuck on the thing. Stuck on the thing. I don't yep. know what that means. He, he definitely got stuck on the that thing. That might have been Morrison, but anyway. Yeah. So we had seen Brian out. We'd seen stars like Kofi and Adam Rose. And then number 19 was Roman Reigns. I got to say something. Last night we were talking on Observer Radio, and we were talking about Reigns. And I said, I expect Reigns to be booed tomorrow. And... Dave made a very important point that at the time I thought, oh man, I'm going to look like an idiot tomorrow. Dave noted that even though we all have been expecting Roman Reigns to get booed, Roman Reigns has never been loudly booed on any television show. He's never booed at any house show. He has never been booed except for a very minute, tiny portion of the audience you can barely hear. Everybody always cheers Roman Reigns. It's, he has never, ever been booed at any show. And as soon as he said that, I thought, man, maybe they have some sort of plan and he actually won't get booed. I was right. He got booed <laughs> heavily. I will even say he got booed way worse than I thought. I thought he'd get booed a little bit. I did not think they would turn on him more than anybody else. In the- They booed him so bad that they booed The Rock. <laughs> it's true. So one minute ago. Mick Foley tweets, So how did the Royal Rumble go? I couldn't catch it due to travel. Did Daniel Bryan win like I hoped he would? (laughs) He's fucking trolling. Still awesome. Because remember last year when he did that big rant that Daniel Bryan didn't win? Ah, yes. Yes. It's still funny. So, yeah, Roman comes out, and uh, whatever the opposite of a Steve Austin pop is, that was this. Oh, my God. (laughs) So hated. (laughs) So, so, so hated. And then, for the next, I don't know, 20 minutes or however long it took to get to the end of the match, he really didn't do anything. He was no. not, they didn't give the fans a reason to cheer him. No. No, he just laid around. Yeah. Slept. Do you remember last year when he set the record for eliminations? Yeah. Last year, he beat the living shit out of everybody. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and they cheered him like crazy. This time, he was a guy. I don't even know if he eliminated anybody, did I, he? I wrote it down. He uh, mm. Upon entering, he eliminated Goldust and Stardust. Mm. So he tossed out an old man and his punk brother. And uh, then he disappeared. He disappeared for a long time. So the crowd at this point, think about this. What does everyone who goes to a Royal Rumble, they buy a ticket, they lay down their hard-earned money, they take their seat. What do they love to do most? Count down with a clock. That's right. They were so pissed at this point, the crowd started to count down, and no one even counted along with it. Yeah. They just didn't give a fuck. (laughs) And then, out came Big E. More booing. I I was hoping he was going to do the agile spot. (laughs) But he didn't. He didn't do anything. No one did anything in this match. No. Miz Dow was number 21. This did wake people up, and they cheered. They thought, well, here's a chance to at least give the crowd a favorite. Someone to cheer for, someone to get behind, someone to show enthusiasm for. So he comes down. Miz tells him, no, no, no. You're my stunt double. I'm taking your spot. Miz hits the apron, and Reigns shoves him down. Miz Dow is conflicted. The crowd cheers him on, and he hits the ring a house of fire. For about 30 seconds, he runs wild, and then Rusev hits him from behind and throws him out, and everyone boos more. That's right. Miz, much like the fans, was shaking with rage. So Ms. Dow Ms. Dow sat down sat down. He may have sat down, I don't know. And shook with rage too. <laughs> you know what I don't understand is like Your cats watch the show and they're now yelling and rage. Yeah, now the cats are out there <laughs> bitching about Roman Reigns. So what I don't understand is so you as Vince McMahon think that Ms. Dow is funny, but you don't want to do anything with him. 
Fine. <laughs> can everybody hear that? Should I take the mic out there? I don't think you need to. Yeah, you don't. Know, I, I can hear it. It's really loud. <laughs> it's going nuts. <laughs> That's All right. Should I go investigate? Uh, I think he's okay. He's probably, got a, he's probably got his hump stick in his mouth. All right. That's what he normally does. But the point of this is... Uh, I'm horribly... Hold on a second. <laughs> Curtis Axel just tweeted, Got jumped by lamb guy and lose my spot in the Royal Rumble. Never eliminated. I'm your winner, damn it. I want Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Makes sense. And if you've read Brock Lesnar's book... Brock Lesnar was very good friends with Curtis, Curtis Axel's father. Maybe he'd do his old friend a favor. I bet they'll do Curtis Axel against Roman Reigns tomorrow, and Reigns just kills him. That's also possible. But anyway, if the, if you know the fans like Mizdow, but you don't want to do anything with Mizdow, fine. Just give the guy 10 minutes in the Royal Rumble and have him eliminate some guys so everybody has a happy day before he gets eliminated. Instead, he runs wild for 10 seconds and you toss his ass. Anyway, who cares? Mark, you called it. Who cares? But uh, so you're saying that that right there was them bl- them breaking up? Uh, they'll, uh, no, not in this company. That's what you said before. I well, oh. what I said was they they did break up, but they're gonna be together tomorrow. Yeah. Then they're gonna break up again. Okay. Then they'll be together on SmackDown. Then they'll break up again, and they'll be together on Raw. Will they be together for Fastlane? Probably, and they may have their match at Fastlane. Dude, oh, why are we talking fa- about Fastlane this Fastlane Showdown? Huh? <laughs> this Adam Rose that you never saw. Yeah. He had a bunny. Okay. Oh, okay. And the Hold bunny. On. What do you mean, like a Playboy bunny or a, no? Like, a man in a bunny outfit. Oh, like a like six feet mall, tall mall Easter bunny. That's right. Like a furry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> a furry. So he had a furry in his uh, menagerie in his gang, and just like Mizdow, the the furry kept upstaging him. Oh. And he started to get mad. Yeah. Just like this angle. Mm. So they broke up on about six straight shows. Huh. They would break up and then they would come out together. Oh. And then they would break up, and they would come out together. This is just what they do. What happened to the rabbit now? Well, what happened was Kane tombstoned the rabbit on two shows in a row. Oh, and he died. No, the bunny kept coming back. Oh. Because he can't be killed by a tombstone. Mm. And then finally Adam Rose gave him a move. It may have been a Masawa elbow, I'm not sure. But the bunny has never been seen since. Huh. Yeah. Is he going to come back and like... I thought he'd be back tonight to eliminate Adam Rose, but they couldn't even figure that out. This is how boring this Royal Rumble was, guys. We're now talking about some rabbit that <laughs> yes. some dork had in his gang. Yeah. Uh, okay. Who's next, Vinny? <laughs> Moving on. I'm sure the next number will be exciting. So with Ms. Dow out and no one left to cheer for, they sent out at number 22, Jack Swagger. <laughs> yes. Real American. Kind yes. of no one to cheer for. I'm not going to get agitated. Why did Zeb Coulter not come out with him? <laughs> uh, who killed him? Rusev killed him? I believe Rusev, Rusev killed him. Rusev killed that little racist man? He was taken out <laughs> backstage in a mystery attack. Oh. Like, I think Rusev was eventually... Like when Stone Cold got run over by that car? Yes. By Rikishi. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I did this for the rock. <laughs> See, I remember I things. I forgot about that. <laughs> that no. I've been reliving it. You know? oh, yeah. When he went after Rusev again, I nearly killed myself. <clears throat> They've wrestled a lot. They've wrestled yeah, I remember, 9 billion times. Didn't they wrestle at WrestleMania last year? They wrestled at every shit? pay-per-view this year. Know. I know I've seen them, too, really have a lackluster <laughs> feud once. <laughs> yes. And I yeah. heard rumblings that they did it again. And again and again. Can we, if Mookie, Mookie Ghana, if you're listening, can you find out, like, Compare the size of the roster, the number of active wrestlers, compared to the hours of television per week. They may have more hours of TV than people to put on there. I'm sure they do. Yeah. This has to. This can't be healthy. So Ryback was number 23. They cut to the ring. Rusev greeted Ryback by throwing his arms back, bugging out his eyes and roaring. <laughs> One of the very best spots of the entire match. Yes. Fans chanted for CM Punk during this number. This is, here is where the fans chanted uh, for CM Punk as the announcers sat there in, sat there in awkward silence. Yeah. Ryback was running wild with closed lines, and he's closed lining guys, no one cares. Suddenly he closed line reigns, and he's everyone's favorite wrestler for a minute. Yep. So Kane was number 24. And I don't know how long the segment actually lasted. 90 <laughs> seconds, two minutes. But I <laughs> swear to you that Kane entered the ring, and for however long that segment lasted until the next guy came in, no one in the ring moved. It's true. There was a lot of choking and squeezing They going were on all just lying there. At the same time. Dean Ambrose was 25. The crowd realized he was one of their very last chances for a winner they would like. Chanted his name. 
<laughs> okay. I got a funny update here. <laughs> yes, yes. Tim here says, I'm trying, but I cannot cancel the WWE Network. The cancellation page has crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Can you can take a screenshot of that and just tweet, tweet the screenshot if you can uh, you know, hide his email and all that. I'm going to try that. <clears throat> Work on that so you can pull that off. So we're sitting here talking about how much this Rumble sucks and how shitty the roster is. Titus O'Neil is 26. <laughs> I had a hearty belly That's laugh. He does. I cannot believe how terrible the show was. And then he's making such a big show of uh, you know, his entrance is so over the top and he's got so much energy. He's slapping the stairs. It's very clear he's there to be a fool. He is there to be the warlord. And he hits the ring, and Ambrose and Rollins are there to greet him with a double clothesline. But Titus O'Neil sucks, and he fucks up his one spot. Yeah. And it took him like three more seconds to get him over the ropes. So, for the record, Titus O'Neil sucks so bad that he was sent out there exclusively to suck, and he screwed it up. Yeah. And you know the best part was? After he fucks it up, all of the announcers go dead silent for about 10 seconds. Because you know Vince is flipping a fucking gasket in their headset. <laughs> and they just calmly sat there listening to it. So if you're curious, Santino's record still stands. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. How they ran through all those fucking facts <laughs> for the goddamn Royal Rumble. Mark is Five the one minutes guy of in the world. facts about this goddamn thing. Just get the fuck on with it. Mark does not like the By the Numbers video. Jesus fucking Christ. And in the middle of it, they just fucking throw in a like plug for the network. I'm watching the fucking network. There's like six people that are actually paying for this shit on pay-per-view. Give me a fucking break. God damn. Uh, there was a lot of facts. A lot of fucking facts that nobody cares about or ever needed to know. They they paid somebody to figure out all those fucking facts. Give me a job. <laughs> I hate my job. I'll figure out all these fucking useless facts for your dumb videos. Oh, Christ. Sorry. Go. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me stop you. Uh, so, Bad anyway. News Barrett was 27. <laughs> Cesaro was 28. The ring was just full of dead weight at this point. Ambrose was lying on the mat, hugging the bottom rope. And JBL noted that Road Dog, when he was in Royal Rumbles, would do this for half the match. Rusev knocked out Big E with a drop kick. Big Show was 29. They did the roar spot. No one in Philadelphia cared, but I always marked out. Again, yeah. if you have all this dead weight in the ring, can you not have everybody jump on Big Show? And when he does the giant roar spot, like five people just jump over the top rope. That'd be fucking hilarious. <laughs> yes. Instead, they just fell down I believe, and stayed there for I believe, a long time. I believe once, Lawler's description here was that everyone had tried to glom him. <laughs> for once, none of the announcers said, now this guy, nobody will be able to get this guy over the top rope, which they've said in several Royal Rumbles that he's been in. As you're well aware of. Been fucking eliminated. Out of it, has he won one? No, I don't. He hasn't. Th I don't th has he ever won, Vinny? Has he Who, won Kane? one? No. no, Big Show. A oh, Big Show. Uh, no. Yeah, he came in second at least once. Okay. Yeah. So that's right with uh, Benoit when he pulled him out with the guillotine. Oh, uh, him too. I was thinking of Rock. Think about that, by the way. That was someone's brilliant idea. We'll have Chris Benoit beat the Big Show by eliminating him from a battle royal with a guillotine. Hey, that was <laughs> awesome. I mean, it was, but who fucking thought of that? Benoit probably. Hey, maybe right. How else is he gonna get the giant out? Throw him. That was an awesome rumble. I will not have you dissing. He's are, tall. Are we even? Are we supposed to talk about Benoit? We, we can a been. little bit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this you know, you know. I don't like now that we've we've broached the subject on the on the network. <laughs> you know, I've been watching all these goddamn pay per views. They, you know, they have the little dots that you can skip to matches. Yes. You skip to the front end. Skip to the back end of the match. None of Benoit's matches have dots. Oh, like really? that will like that eliminates him from the history yes, of I the see. WWE. Yes, we just we we don't put the dots in, so you can't fucking find his matches. I see. That's what they did instead of like trimming them out or whatever the fuck. They that's too much them, work. You know? Yeah, that would too be, much work. You know. But so that's enough about Benoit. <laughs> <laughs> Big Show and Kane continued to uh, beat everyone up for a while and throw everyone out. Dolph Ziggler was number thirty. He went all young bucks and super kicked everything that moved. By the way, what a number 30 this was yet again. <sighs> yeah. At least this time they were not expecting Brian. So he was not. In, in fact, he was one of their favorites. But at this point, anyone other than uh, uh, Dolph or Ambrose winning would have been a terrible disappointment to the Philadelphia fans. 
So they did stuff for a while. Dolph eliminated Cesaro. And then Dolph tried something off the face, or off the top rope. Big Show punched him in the face. There was more booing. And then they did the funniest elimination, <laughs> elimination ever, because Dolph was knocked unconscious. So Big Show grabbed a leg and an arm. Kane grabbed a leg and an arm, and it lifted his unconscious body like dead weight over the top rope and kind of gently set him down to the apron and tumbling down to the floor. Yep. So there you go. There's uh, Dolph's appearance. And somewhere in here, by the way, here's a fact for you, Mark. Oh. Kane broke Shawn Michaels' record for career Rumble eliminations. Oh, Boom. man. How devastating. Take that, Shawn I guess, Michaels. I guess everybody's got to have something. Well, yeah. Shawn had more than just those eliminations. Shawn had a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so the final four, it appeared. I wish I'd been on the phone when Vince called Shawn and told him that Kane was going to break his Royal Rumble record. I can only imagine Shawn's reaction. What record? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So it came down to what appeared to be a final four of Kane, Big Show, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns. Now, before you continue, I just want everyone listening to this right now. On the rare chance that you subscribe to this website, but not the network, and you did not see this, I want you to imagine that Vince McMahon, in his mind, imagined the following scenario. And in his mind, the place was going crazy for Roman Reigns. As he stood up against these two giants. Just imagine that as you listen to what happened. Well, mostly the crowd just booed. They were booing everything everyone did, especially Roman. And uh, the giants worked them over. And they did the same deadweight elimination of Ambrose. At this point, the crowd just began to chant, Bullshit! (laughs) (laughs) Not only did they chant bullshit, but a segment of the crowd was chanting, This is bullshit! Just to make sure you knew what was bullshit. (laughs) It was this. This! (laughs) Show was just laughing at these cheers, or chants. Reigns made a comeback and got booed. They cut him off and got booed. They tried to do a spot where Show turned on Kane, and they fucked it up to an unrecognizable degree. <laughs> it was really odd. And the Giants traded punches. You know what I just saw on the network was when uh, Sid, Hulk Hogan, and Ric Flair did that spot, where Hogan's trying to pull Sid out, and then Flair dumps them both over. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about Sid fucking Vicious and Hulk Hogan having to do a spot together with Ric Flair. Thank God Flair was there. They did that so much better than Kane and the Big Show did this breakup spot. I don't even know what was supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... They started punching each other, and the crowd booed, and they started fighting. They grabbed each other by the throat, and I was hoping they would finally do the double choke slam spot, but they chickened out. The only <laughs> thing that could have saved this match, the double choke slam spot. That's it? That would have saved it? For me. Oh, okay. But they were fighting near the ropes, and Reigns came over and dumped them out, and somebody fucked up and rang the bell, and everyone booed passionately. Mm-hmm. Shannon, we want Rusev since he had not been eliminated. He was still on the floor, and they could see him. We at home could not. And the Giants returned to the ring to beat Reigns up. There was a chant of, we want Rusev. I can only imagine what Vince thought of that. <laughs> Bunch of Russian fans, I'm sure. I'm, I guess there's a huge, there must be a huge Bulgarian fan base in Philadelphia. <laughs> so Rock came out to help his cousin or whatever. And the crowd cheered at first because it's Rocky and they were happy to see him. Then they realized he was helping Roman and they kept booing everyone. <laughs> it's amazing. So he cleared the Incredible. ring. Incredible. Rock left, Rusev returned, everyone cheered, then Reigns threw him out and everyone booed. Brock was shown watching backstage. No reaction, really. And Rock goes in, they finally rang the bell and played Roma's music. It was actually amazing the first time, because he dumped the Giants, and the bell rang, so we at home thought he had won. We had not noticed Rusev was never eliminated. And uh, they didn't play his music, and so all you could hear was just this thunderous booing. They were so pissed. <laughs> so after the match, the match is finally officially over, and the music's playing, and Rock goes in to hug Roman, and he raises Roman's arm, and the whole city boos, and Rock does the eyebrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> what is this? What the fuck? <laughs> like Rock didn't know what he was being brought in for, obviously. And like Rock has never been turned on by a crowd before. No, of course Rock's not. been turned on many times. The Helmsleys came out in confusion. Reigns pointed to the sign as everyone booed. Rock left Reigns to bask in the crowd's booze. <laughs> and there was some pyro, and the crowd kept on booing. So, that was one of the very worst Royal Rumbles ever. And I repeat how I started this. This show had, quite possibly, this company's match of the year, and nothing else worthy of being on pay-per-view. You know, when you really look back at this 
Royal Rumble match. It was so Vince McMahon. Daniel Bryan is pushed as just another high mid-card babyface. Most of the roster are complete geeks. And it comes down to his new hand-picked chosen one against two giants and an evil Russian. And Roman tosses all of them out, and then he gets endorsed by The Rock. It's I can just imagine Vince thinking about this before he goes to sleep at night and how awesome it's going to be. It's got everything you need. A long-haired, muscular, handsome man throwing out two ugly giants and an evil Russian. And then The Rock comes and raises his hand. And Vince is now sweating at what this is going to sound like through his headsets as the crowd goes crazy. And then this happened. And then this happened. Now, that was the end of the show. I'm sure most of you turned off your uh, television as quickly as possible and perhaps threw it away. <laughs> For those of you who stayed tuned to the network, what a surprise you got. Roman Reigns and The Rock were walking around backstage. <laughs> yes! I, be- about. I-, I believe Todd Phillips came up to interview him. Somebody came up to interview him. And what ensued was, for certain, the worst promo of Rock's career. (laughs) And maybe the worst promo of Roman Reigns' career. Uh, Someone else saw this and said that this will almost certainly be wiped out from the network if you can, I don't know if you'll be able to watch the post show on demand. But oh my God, this is a complete disaster. They were both stumbling all over their lines. They were both completely lost their train of thought. Rock at one point realized what a complete boondoggle the entire thing was. Just started laughing at himself, <laughs> laughing at Roman, laughing at people off camera, laughing at the announcer. Just fuck this. This is no. This cannot be saved. Let's just have some fun. But it's it, a boondoggle. <laughs> what did you see this promo? <laughs> it's a uh, embarrassing disaster. Uh, <laughs> it's a. It's a. It's not a good thing. So, you need me to look it up for you and give you the exact dictionary definition? No, no, no. no. I thought it was a Vinnyism or something. No, that, I, I swear to God, it's a real word. Oh, all right, fine. No, no, no I, I, I'm okay. Not, I believe I am not you. angry. I'm just. God, calm down, Vinny. Vinny gets Jesus. agitated. Am I coming off as angry? No. Go okay. ahead, Vinny. <laughs> Point being... You're just boondoggled. I, I, maybe I boondoggled myself. Mm. So, this promo sucked. It was extremely terrible. And we all cannot believe what we were seeing. So... We were only subjected to it because Brian had to eat a cheese stick. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the cheese stick was better than this promo. And had to have some polio string cheese. It was better than this promo. And we had to watch It wasn't that. funnier, but it was better. Yeah. So that was that, everyone. <laughs> now you're forgetting. They also set up another match for WrestleMania. Who cares? John- oh, yeah. John- awesome. <laughs> John Cena is doing a promo, and Rusev runs up and just snatches the mic out of the hand and starts ranting in Russian. It's great. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, John Cena and Rusev is, in fact, taking place at WrestleMania. So right now, the WrestleMania card looks exactly as we figured. So is John Cena going to break the undefeated Rusev streak? Then? Yeah. No, no doubt? Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's good. So That's how you do it. Cena versus Rusev. Lesnar versus Reigns. What else? Orton versus Rollins. Ooh. Daniel Bryan, I'll bet you anything he's going to go with Sheamus, because they wanted to do that last year, and all the fans had to fuck it up by putting him in the main event. And Hunter versus Sting. Anything else? I'm sure they'll have a women's match. I guarantee you a Miz will wrestle an Uso. Whoa. <laughs> Miz versus an Uso. Ascension versus Demolition, I hope. Why wasn't Consequences Creed in the Royal we Rumble? Oh no, it's a <laughs> mystery. Doesn't he actually have an injury? The other boy. No, he were wrestled in, there in the opener. And he didn't oh, get in. yeah. Xavier was did? Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Big E and Kofi did. No, it was a six man. Oh, Adam Rose was in the match. I was confused. Yeah, I didn't see it. Those All right, other everybody. ones, they get to go in and Consequences Creed. It is. A, he did have an injury. He was working with a bad foot. I see. Maybe they figured that was too far a drop from the apron to the floor. Mm. Yeah. 